It's such a joy and a delight to have you join us for today's broadcast. I trust that today's broadcast will be a blessing to you. Why don't you sit back, relax, and please don't change that channel and let us see what God has to say to us today. Never let that be the reason why you do any good thing that you do. It's interesting the metaphor that Jesus uses for the word of God. He calls it a seed. I don't want what God has for you, but I want all that God has for me. all of the pandemic news and alarms that we're hearing all around us you have kept us safe and secure we thank you we are changed for all of the miracles you've brought us we give you praise we love you and we trust you through it all hallelujah 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 john chapter 8 verses 31 through to 36 then jesus said to those jews who believed him if the condition there the condition there if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Verse 32. And it means that verse 32 was spoken within the context of verse 31. You cannot walk in the reality of the truth in verse 31 and ignore what he said in verse 32 and ignore what he said in verse 31 because verse 32 we all hear it everywhere on our talk shows and secular tv we hear this everywhere but we must understand the context with which it was spoken and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so the truth he's talking about is not somebody's personalized opinion of truth. No, sir. The truth he's talking about is the word of the living God, which we come to know when we abide in that word. Say amen, somebody. And you shall know the truth. The truth he's talking about is not somebody telling you they stole your perfume 15 million years ago. No. It's not your boyfriend telling you they cheated on you 15 million years ago. No. The truth he's talking about is abiding in God's word. When you abide in his word, you will be his disciple. And you will know the truth. And the truth you know will make you free. Let's read on. Verse 33. Then answered him, We are Abraham's descendants. And I've never been in bondage to anyone. 
How can you now say you may, you will be made free? They turned the, the talk to racism. He was talking about independence. They switched the whole thing to racism, to bigotry. Isn't that kind of very applicable to us today that we are celebrating American independence right in the midst of all of the protests, racial injustice, and Judge Floyd? Is it right? isn't, 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 isn't God an amazing God talking straight to us? Because they were talking about their heritage and their culture as Jews that we have never been born because they thought that freedom was a virtue of heritage that all those gentiles are the one in bondage we are jews and we are free jesus said no 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 you have it all wrong freedom isn't about race or culture or ethnicity it's about abiding in my word. Let's read down. Contaminate the great life that God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We're living in truly perilous times. Not just with the COVID pandemic, but all of the protests that have broken, up, broken out across our nation. And uh, Judge Floyd and racial injustice. It almost feels like we are the precipice precipice of of something crucial in this nation especially considering our history of just terrible racial injustice but it's only the superficial carnal believer that will just settle into one side and look at things just superfluously and callously and not be insightful enough because 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 those of us and all of us should be more deep and analytical and understand what's behind this. Not just studying the, the stem as it were, but also the root. It makes no sense when you decry racism in america because you are black and you support tribalism in nigeria and you say terrible things about tribes it makes no sense you're just a hypocrite and you you you, you make you make comments about it's, it's ungodly. It's, it's no different from white supremacy. It's not different. I, I used to w walk in New York with this busy emergency room where this microphone. And uh, I will be having my breakfast. I'm just enjoying my breakfast. And usually all these Jamaican nurses. Jamaica has 2.8 million people. 2.8 million. How many Jamaicans think Africa is the size of Jamaica? I know, because it will go on the microphone. Because we had this enclave in the Bronx of a lot of people from, I think, Mali or Chad, one of those places. They speak French. They were speaking French. So they will come to the ER, they can't speak English, they're speaking French. The nurse goes on the phone. Talk to our gym. Me, I'm having my breakfast. Dr. Ajim, can you please come? We have somebody here who is speaking Africa. <laughs> come and translate. Come and translate. We have somebody here speaking Africa. One day I got tired of teaching all of them individually. I called all of them together. I said, listen. That Africa you call anyhow. You think it's the size of Jamaica, 2.8 million. Nigeria alone, about 56, 57 countries. Nigeria alone, one country out of them, 200 million people. They said, huh? I said, yes. Yes. And Nigeria alone has over 200 different languages. Huh? I said, you see that doctor there, one of the colleagues, an Igbo colleague that used to work with me? Ah. Uh, yeah, 506. I'm, I'm even just even making it easier for them. I'm making it easier. 506 different dialects, yes. 
So you see, you see, you see that doctor. I said, if I want to communicate with him, I have to communicate with him in English because he can. Uh, uh, I can do some evil though. I can do some evil. But I, I have to go to England because he cannot speak my language and I cannot speak his African language. They say, I said, yes. <laughs> I said, you know one thing else? Everybody that, co- that speaks the African language I can speak also speaks English. So stop disturbing me eating my food. You never need me to translate. Listen to those people, those Africans, because they just saw them speaking African. There's nothing they, they use immediately. They are speaking Africa. They are not speaking Africa. They are speaking French. <laughs> Get up a hotline. You, yeah, we have a hotline for translation of. But to them, anything that's that's not English and it's not Spanish, and they look African, is Africa. <laughs> just speaking French. Praise the Lord. And for many of us that grew up in Africa, thankfully, many of our kids who grew up here don't even know, and they think this is crazy. They really think it's crazy. And, and they're right. It's crazy. Sometimes our children are right. You should listen to them. I always listen to my kids. And when they're right, I apologize. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You're, you're right. I don't force. Sometimes they're right. Because some of the beliefs, convictions, some, the, 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 the mother will be telling her daughter they live in Houston never to marry the son that lives in Austin it is crazy it is demonic it is devilish it is of not of God that's how the distance is if you look at the distance from some tribe to some tribe you, you, you must never marry Jebo <laughs> So when I heard people were saying that I changed my tribe, I'm now from Asaba. <laughs> well, the colleagues, well, the colleagues, well, the colleagues will let me preach. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's not me just making oh everybody from that tribe is dirty and oh they are greedy people. It's it's not of God. That kind of thinking and talking should not be found in our mouth as children of God. It's not. Jesus said in Christ Jesus, there's neither Jew nor Greek. That means Jesus came to dismantle racism. There's neither bond nor free that means he came to dismantle socialism there's neither male nor female that means he came to dismantle sexism god is not a sexist neither is he a racist for you're all one in christ jesus that is in your bible anybody that's telling you slavery supported in bible is a liar and you're a fool for listening to them Oh, the Bible says, oh, the slave must uh, uh, support the master. So the Bible supports slavery. First of all, I didn't read in there that it said the black slave must support the white master. You are the one putting that there. Secondly, he didn't mean the kind of slavery that they went to Africa and put people in chains. That's not what he was talking about. You can read it in context. That's not what Paul was talking about. Praise the Lord. And that one he was talking about, he was talking about Jewish people. All of them were one race. Do you still love me? So as we protest against racism in America, we must denounce tribalism in Africa. Because it is not of God. It is not of God. It is not of God. Appointing people just because of how their name sounds or where their daddy comes from is devilish. And that's the reason why many of our countries are not pro- progressing. You should appoint people based on competence who can do the job regardless of where your daddy comes from. Praise the Lord. 
Then I lived in a beautiful Caribbean country for a few months called St. Kitts. St. Kitts, beautiful country, beautiful country. Almost everybody there is black, so there's no problem racism. And they all speak English, so there's no problem of tribe, like, you know, in Africa, it's prejudice. Thank you, Lord. Satan doesn't mind us living. He minds us being free. In fact, he doesn't even mind us just being set free. Set free means you're free for a while. Most of us have enjoyed what it is to be set free. Free for a while. That's why many of us love church. Because when we come in the church, we're coming into the presence of God. Have you ever noticed, you don't have to tell me, I know you have no struggles, but for those of us who have struggles, praise the Lord, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that when you come to church, whatever it is your own brand of struggle is, is as if you get relief. I don't care if it's depression. When you just come to church, you feel, you feel fine. Maybe your own is pornography. When you come to church, in that thought never comes to your head. You know why? Because you are in the presence of God. <laughs> ah. And the scripture said, the hills melt like wax in the presence of God. Oh God, if I start that, I'll never finish preaching. The hills, the hills of sin, the hills of injustice, the hills of slavery, the hills of emotional turmoil, the hills of depression, the hills of dejection. The only reason why Satan is able to, to, to embondage us with those hills is because we are not walking strong. We are not creating the presence of God strong enough around us. When you bring the presence of God into that thing that heals us, cut to melt like wax. So Jesus gives the insightful believer who is totally dissatisfied with just being set free. And really, really wants to walk in freedom. I have one life to live, I've got to live it. I've not always had a great past. But I want to enjoy my life. Did you know that God died so that you could enjoy your life? Stop listening to anybody who's making you feel funny because you're enjoying your life. The devil is a liar. God wants you to enjoy your life. And why is that so hard for you to understand? Those of us that are, those of us that are loving parents. Only wicked parents want children to have miserable lives. Those of us that are loving parents, we want our children to have great lives. We will do anything for them to enjoy their lives. So if you can believe that about you, why are you finding to believe that about God? He wants you to enjoy your life. He hates it when you're frustrated and when you're depressed and when you have all of this turmoil and all of this inner calm, God hates that and he hates it when you're bound by anything I heard him, Jesus he who sings a slave to sin because he does not want you to be a slave to anything or a slave to anyone He wants you to be free. Not just your nation or your color. Those are important. But also you. Because it's not good enough for the nation to be free or the black race to be free and you're still bound by whatever. So he tells us If you're going to be free, 
If you're going to be made free, child of God, if you're going to be truly free, truly free, you got to abide in my word. That's when you be my disciples. So, so when Minister Ken tells us today's Bible, he tells us, <coughs> David said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. I mean, if you read it within, you know, our westernized eyes, today's eyes, you miss what he was saying. You miss what he was saying. To understand what he meant in that scripture, you have to read it within the context of which he wrote it. Because when he wrote it, they lived in the deserts. And they used to sojourn. And the desert was full of all kinds of, not just dangerous, killer creatures. Like snakes and, and, and scorpions and adders. And, and, and many times you'll have to travel at night. And if you travel, it's, it's kind of like life. When you travel that, you never know where the snake will come from and bite you or the, or the poisonous scorpion and just sting you to death. Sometimes life can be like that. Just throw you a curveball from nowhere. The David says, no, but we're not defenseless. So you know what they will do? They will shackle lamps little lamps to their ankles sometimes very painful sometimes abiding in god's word is, is a very tough thing because we live in a very busy difficulty this taking your mind that taking your mind and sometimes the, the temptation is for you to, to 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 refuse to prioritize abiding in the word it's not because you are bad it's just life but it's a mistake that we can't afford you got to abide in the word you got to because sometimes in a hurry, you might in a hurry, you just want to get there. And you, you don't want to deal with, sh with shackling your feet with the lantern. You just want to go, no, 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 baby. You'll be beaten by a snake, deadly snake. You won't get there. So David said, we have learned to shackle the lambs. So they will learn, they will shackle them. Sometimes the lambs, very painful. Sometimes it will cut into their skin and they will be bleeding while they are walking. But they could not afford to take it off because they must endure the cutting of the lamp if they're going to survive the biting of the snake now here's the thing about the lamp it was never bright enough to reach down the block but it only lighted enough for them to take the next step ah thank you Jesus oh lord just give me enough light to take the next step Give us this day our daily bread. He's not going to give you tomorrow's bread today. No, that's what you want. So that because tomorrow you don't want to walk by faith, not lie. He's only going to give you today's bread today. So that tomorrow, oh, rainy day. Rainy day. So God take, took a vacation on rainy day. He wants you to wake up every day knowing you have a need for him. So he's going to give you today's bread today. So that when you get to tomorrow, you know you need him for today's bread. So the lamp only light enough to take the next step. And that's what I need you to know. That's what I need you to know. Sometimes you don't know. But that's what the enemy wants to do. He will cripple your mind about a problem that's not even there. What's going to be there? What's going to happen next year? What's going to happen 25 years? What's going to happen with my immigration? What's going to be the lawyer I got to? The letter I got from where well, we used to call it INS. What's it now? BCCIS. BCIS just wrote me. They are going to deport me. That he, will, he, he wants to kill you from enjoying your the problem. is not even there. And there you are. You can't even enjoy what God has done today. So what, 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 what do I do? Father? Just lay it on the Lord and just take today's step. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Just take the next step. Just keep walking. Just keep living. Don't stop. Don't stop. Stop worrying. Stop letting stress attend you. Let me, uh, uh, stress uh, and... Uh, 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 
Because sometimes it's the stress that will kill you. Not anybody deporting you anywhere. It's the stress. The worry. You just decide. I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to walk on. Because God is not obligated to show you the step you're going to take next year. He only promised to show you the step you will take today. So, so David said, your word is like that lamp onto my feet and a light onto my path. Just light enough for me to take the next step. Light enough for me to take the next step. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to end up. Just take the next step. Oh, I don't know what my future is going to be. Just take the next step. Oh. I don't know if I'm going to make it with this husband. Just take the next step. Oh, this child is acting wayward. What? Just take the next step. Oh, oh, this job is. Just take the next step, baby. Take the next step. Take the next step. Never allow the worry of tomorrow or the mistake of the past destroy the freedom of today. The only day you have is today. You don't have yesterday. You don't have tomorrow. It's today. And Satan wants to destroy your today by the mistakes of your yesterday and the worry of your tomorrow. You have to resist the devil. And choose to enjoy today. Because today is all that God has given you, baby. That's all you got. That's all you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. You shall know the truth. I titled this True Freedom. decide to be enveloped within the twin context of abiding in his word and abiding in his presence abiding in his word abiding in his presence abiding in his word abiding in his presence is the secret of living a life of perpetual freedom that's how you're made free. May God make you free today. Wherever it is you're watching me. So thankful for the opportunity to be able to come to your home, your office, or wherever it is you're viewing this broadcast. Now, if you don't know Jesus, can I pray with you? Just say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord. I receive you today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, please call to let us know. Our phone number is on the screen. We would love to pray with you. Or if you want us to pray with you concerning anything, we would love to agree with you in prayer. But be kind to go on to our website, call into our church office, let us hear from you. We would love to pray with you. Additionally, if the message has been a blessing to you and you want the message in its entirety for a small donation to the ministry, we will rush the CD or the DVD to you. Call in, let us know, we'll get it down to you. And if you're ever in the Houston area, we would love to have you fellowship with us at Grace International Church. Look forward to seeing you. And remember these words from Romans chapter 5 verse 17, the B part says, And we who have received abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall rule and reign in Christ Jesus. We will be back at this same station at this same time next week to bring you more word from the Lord. We love you. God bless you.